In this video, you will learn advanced uses of the cut, copy, and paste command in Microsoft Windows. Most of this should work just fine in Mac computers as well. This is part two of a two-part video tutorial to help you learn to master cutting, copying, and pasting. If you haven't seen part one of this video, click the link up here or in the description below this video. In part one of this two-part video, we covered the basics of how to cut, copy, and paste. We worked exclusively with text in a word processor. In this video, you will learn that cutting, copying, and pasting applies to so much more than just word processing. For example, you can copy and paste entire files, folders, photos, spreadsheets, web page contents, and more. You'll also learn some advanced techniques for selecting what you copy or uh, cut. Let's start by moving some files around on our hard drive. I have a more in-depth video about moving pictures and files around. You can access that by clicking the link up here or in the description below this video. In this video, I'll just give you a quick peek into cutting, copying, and pasting files using File Explorer. Note that if you are using a version of Windows prior to the version 8, the file management program is called Windows Explorer and will look slightly different from what I'm about to show you, but the concepts are the same. File Explorer lets you view files on your computer's hard drives, solid state drives, and any other storage devices attached to your computer, including USB flash drives and memory cards from your camera and other devices. For this example, let's look at the pictures on my computer. First, you'll need to run the File Explorer program. Click the icon down here or press the Windows key while simultaneously pressing the E key on your keyboard. Next, I'll open my Pictures folder. Then I'll open the Nerd Sidekick folder. This folder contains several pictures. Let's copy this one picture. I can right click on the picture, then click Copy. Or I can click on the picture, then click Home, and click the Copy icon. Finally, I can click on the picture, then press Control C on my keyboard. All three of these methods of copying do the same thing. They copy the picture to the clipboard. Now we can paste this picture in other places. For example, if I want to copy this file to somewhere else on the drive, I just navigate to the folder where it should go. In this case, I will put this picture on an entirely different drive installed in this computer. I will put this in the folder called Put Copy Here. To do that, I just right click on the folder, then click Paste. The picture is copied into the folder. I could also click Home and click the Paste icon, or my favorite method is simply to use the keyboard and just press Control V. We just copied a file. The original file is still found in the folder where we got it. It was not removed. If instead we right click on the picture and click Cut, notice the picture becomes faded, but it stays where we found it. It has not been removed yet. Now we go to the folder where we want to move the file and click Home and Paste. The picture is pasted here. If we go back to the folder where we cut the picture, notice the picture is now gone. Let's do that again. This time I click on a picture and press Control X. Again, that cuts the picture, but it is still showing in the folder, but note that it looks faded. If I decide that I no longer wish to cut this file and paste it somewhere else, I can press the escape key on my keyboard. Notice that the picture we cut is no longer faded, but is back to normal. And if I right click, notice that the paste command is gray, meaning you have nothing on your clipboard to paste. The cut command was canceled and the contents of the clipboard are removed by pressing escape. This escape operation 
does not work when working with other types of data, for example, text in a word processor. So far, we just moved files around on our computer's drive, but we can also copy a picture into other programs. For example, let's open Microsoft Word here. I'll go back to my pictures and press Control C or any of the other methods I have shown you for copying a file. I switch back to Word and press Control V to paste. The picture is now included in my Word document and I can move it around and modify the picture using Word's editing capabilities. There may be other programs that will allow you to paste the picture into it. You'll just have to experiment with the capabilities of the programs that you wish to use. Each program determines what it can and can't do with the contents you have placed on the clipboard. The type of content you place on the clipboard can determine what a target program can do with that content. If you copy a type of content to the clipboard that can't be pasted into a particular program, the program you try to paste it into will simply not allow you to paste. So don't be afraid to try copying and pasting something. The worst that can happen is that it won't work. You won't break something by trying. When you are selecting items to be cut or copied, there are two special ways that you can select those things. First, you can control select items. What that means is that when you hold down the control key and select text, for example, then you go to a different place in the document, continuing to hold down the control key and select additional non-contiguous data, in other words, data that is separated by other data, I can easily select those separate pieces of data into a single grouping. So if I now copy this highlighted text and paste it, you will see that the different lines that I had selected are now pasted together. However, if I want to select a contiguous group of data using a starting and ending point, I simply click at the beginning of where I want to start my selection, then hold down shift on the keyboard and click at the end of where I wish to make my selection. You'll notice that everything in between has been selected. If I copy the selection, all of the highlighted material is copied and would be pasteable as a block of text. This same methodology works in your files. Back in File Explorer, I have a list of documents I wish to copy, but I only wish to take the first, third, and seventh document out of this entire list. I can hold down the control key and click on the individual documents that I want to copy. You'll notice that each of them has been highlighted individually. Now if I press Control C on my keyboard, I have copied those three files only and can now move to a new folder where I can paste those with a Control V. And you'll see that three files have now been copied to this new folder. If I go back to my original list and instead click the second document and hold down the Shift key, and click on the fifth document, you'll notice now that all four documents from two through five are now selected. If I copy and paste these, all four documents are copied. You can use these same techniques in other programs. For example, in Microsoft Excel, I can select just specific lines that I wish to copy. I hold down the control key, and again, I click on lines one, five and lines 10. And you'll see just those three lines have been selected. Now I will copy those, move my cursor down in the bottom and paste those. You'll see those three lines have been duplicated there. And here is one final trick to quickly duplicate a file or other text. If I click on a file and hold down the control key, simultaneously clicking and dragging, I'm continuing to keep the mouse down, mouse button held, and I can drag this file to another location and I have effectively copied and pasted the file with one simple motion. 
Likewise, if I do a similar step in a word processor, I can copy a word or any selection just by highlighting that selection and control dragging the text to where I want it. When you paste something into Microsoft Word, you may get a few options for how you wish to paste whatever it is that you are pasting. For example, if I paste text that has any kind of formatting already on it, I may or may not wish to keep that formatting. So I can choose one of the options here to either leave the formatting as is or remove all the formatting. There are several of these options that you will see as you are using the paste command and I encourage you to explore these as you use your computer. Since we are talking about selecting things, I must mention a way to select all of something. The, the key to remember how to do this lies in what I just said, the word all. The word all begins with the letter A. If I hold down the control key and press the letter A, we cause Word to select the entire document. This control A command works in many programs, such as Excel and even your web browser. There are lots of ways to use these cut, copy, and paste techniques, and I encourage you to explore and try new things without worrying about making mistakes. This is how you will learn and grow your abilities. You can almost always undo any changes you make, so don't be afraid of making mistakes. If you have questions or comments, please post those in the comments section below this video. I hope you will join me for additional tutorials that I am making for my mom in the Mom and Dad Technology Tutorial Series. Click here for a playlist of all the videos from that series. Please like this video if it helped you and click here to subscribe to my channel to get additional videos as I release those. I'm Fred Kelly, your nerd sidekick making you the technology hero. Thank you for watching.